Good morning and welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. My name is Reese Leach. I'm an elder here. We're so happy that you could be with us today to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Believe it or not, we've been uh, recording these services for over a year now. And starting next Sunday, we're going to have the great joy of being able to meet together here at uh, Grace Church at 1844 Hypoluxo Road in Lantana, Florida. I want to say thank you to the people that have been able to make these services come to, into your homes every week. Reverend Gill, Jim Leach, Brad Keller, Lynn Orionez, and Barbara Stanton. Their commitment and their loyalty and their faithfulness have seen us through the tough times where we couldn't come to church in person. And now, when we get to meet again, starting next week, make sure that you give a special welcome to these people. <clears throat> we can praise God for seeing us through these tough times. And as God would tell us to say, take joy. Take joy in all the wonderful things in life, things that we might have uh, taken for granted in the past, like meeting in person, or even Mother's Day. I want to thank you for all the well wishes last week, Mother's Day. And for me, from start to finish, it was one of the best days of my life, being with my family, my children, and my, my mother. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, start off our service today with our mission statement. Our mission here at Grace is to worship God, to study God's word, and to serve the community. And next week when we meet in person, the service will be at 11.30 uh, instead of 11 o'clock, but you're welcome to come early. 11.30 a.m. we'll be meeting here on Pentecost Sunday. Very fitting, I think, for starting our, our new era of growth and service in Lantana. Please join me now in the call to worship. It's from Psalm 1. Happy are those who take delight in the law of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water. In all they do, they prosper. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, May God number us with the righteous as we worship the Lord. Let us worship God. Brad is going to play and sing. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Thank you, Brad. To meditate upon your law, O God, is to learn of your love and know of your righteousness. 
You are a God of tender mercy, whose benevolent care protects our children and all creation. We gather to worship you as creatures of righteousness, made whole by the redeeming love of Jesus the Christ. Open your hearts to sing of your goodness, our minds to explore your wisdom, and our lips to give you all praise. Amen. I ask you now to offer the peace of Christ to the one worshiping with you today or through a text or a phone call later on after the service. We are one in Christ and encouragement in his name is means everything. I'd like to start today's prayers of the people by thanking all those that send in their prayer requests. We include them every week and we'll continue to do that when we get to meet in person. Our prayer is that we'll also be able to record services even as we meet in, in person and be able to put those up on YouTube and uh, those that could not make it in person can still worship with us. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we ask with assurance for healing and hope for our friends, our neighbors, people we don't even know. Specifically, Ellen and Steve, Jerry and Karen, Bob and Dawn, Jerry, Jeff, Keith and Tamar. We know that your caring touch sees people in the Balaram family, the Beharis and the Lees, and all of the Grace family. Thanks, God for all of the answered prayers. This coming week, being able to meet in person and Jim Leach being accepted in the United States Navy. Praise be to God. We ask for comfort and joy for those that can't wait to be socializing again, safely, of course. Carolyn and Annette, Steve and Kern, Valerie and Brad, Jack and Ian, Glenn and Genevieve, Bill and Edith, Millie and Ann and Lorna. We have some special needs here and abroad. Keep, keep others in our prayers that know that we are prayer warriors for them. We ask for hope and encouragement and leadership and light that you provide to Terry and Reese and Jim, Kim and Heather, Sarah and Steve, Millie and Mark, Donovan and Shelley and Mike. Protection and peace for all of our students, including Doreen and Maylene, Kayla, Ashley and Aiden and Emily, and all the teachers that help our young people move into their adulthood. Brad and Debbie, Jim and Ann, and so many more. And we praise God for all the servicemen and women, both home and abroad, that they let us have this liberty of worship together. We thank you for the clergy, specifically Reverend Gill, our first responders right here in our community, Rick and Steve and Jim, and our healthcare professionals, Lorna and Maureen. We also ask for protection and hope and peace and livelihoods and food and medicine for those in Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, family members in England and Russia, Turkey and Ukraine and many more around the world. Lord, you know what our prayer requests are before we even ask them, but it's important for us to offer them up, knowing in confidence that you answer prayer. And now, please join me with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'll now read out our prayer of confession. Our Heavenly Father, we confess that often we would rather live in the glorious days of the past than risk the uncertain outcome of the future. Deepen within us the sense of shame and sorrow for the wrongs we have done, for the good we have left undone and strengthen every desire to amend our lives according to thy will. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation through your loving kindness in Jesus Christ, 
our Lord. Amen. And through the grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know that our sins are forgiven. Join me now in reading our affirmation of faith. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. to God. Here at Grace Presbyterian Church, we're good stewards of those funds. We put them to good use in the community and around the world. Your gifts can be mailed to 1844 Hypoluxo Road, Lantana, Florida, 33462. Thank you. And now Brad's going to play us some beautiful, beautiful music.
now please join me in the prayer of dedication. The Lord really appreciates generous givers, cheerful givers. Please join me. Amend the truth of your love, O shield and defender. You send us into the world to radiate the joy of new life. Accept our efforts and make them productive in fulfilling your will. Enhance our gifts with the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. In all that we do, challenge us to be obedient to the call of Jesus Christ, to walk in faithfulness and to respond to the tasks you assign us. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today will be taken from Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Hear the word of God as it is written in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, beginning with verse 6. Jesus said, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. This is a prayer of Jesus. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these words in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Here ends the reading of our scripture lesson. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, Jesus is praying for us, and this is known as the high priestly prayer of our Lord Jesus. And it's good to know today that Jesus is praying for us right now. It's encouraging to us because it's not easy to live in this world today. We've faced many challenges with the pandemic and, and just dealing with a lot of 
the things that have been happening, even what's been facing the church while we've been apart, it's not been easy. So we need the Lord's help. We're not aware of most of the Lord's prayers. We know that Jesus would go off by himself to pray, and most of these prayers were not recorded by the disciples. We know there's a prayer where the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray, and Jesus taught them. And now we see Jesus praying this prayer today where he asks for God to protect us, to help us, and also that we might be one, just as Jesus and the Heavenly Father are one, that we might have unity in the church. And so Jesus prays for us. So what do the disciples need protecting from? Later in the prayer, Jesus is more specific. He says, I ask you to protect them, Heavenly Father, from the evil one. And that's verse 15. The evil one is sometimes referred to as Satan in the Gospel of John, or the one who is the ruler in this present world. But the point is the same for Jesus. There is an evil force in this world working in opposition to God to take hold of the disciples' hearts, minds, and spirit. Jesus makes clear that the ruler of this present world has been judged and condemned by God. Even so, he is let loose and the disciples are at risk. And so, we need this prayer protection from our Lord Jesus. And Jesus encourages us to be obedient to our Heavenly Father just as Jesus was faithful and obedient to him. Jesus has another name for the devil, the evil one. In chapter 8, verse 44, he calls Satan the father of lies. And we see that so clearly in our world today. We see this with false advertising, that somehow if you have a particular product, if you drive a certain car, that somehow this is what brings you success and happiness in the world. And all of us are tempted with these things in life. We're tempted to feel bad because we don't have sometimes the things that other people have. And it becomes sometimes very difficult to be strong in our faith when we're challenged that way. Jesus also prays for us to be aware of what the evil one tries to do in pulling us away. I remember at my last church in Ocala that there was a family of girls there from a very well-to-do family. Three girls very active in the youth ministry, but one girl was older and, and she had graduated from high school, but she was known as being the wild one in the community. And they were always talking about how wild she was. She was always running around doing different things. And, and her mom used to say, I, I sure wish you could meet her. Maybe 
you could speak some words of wisdom to her or, or help her out in some way. But she was always running from one place to the next, and I never did have the opportunity for a long time to see her. Well, one day she was riding around Lake Weir on a motorcycle, and she had an accident. She broke her leg. And so now she was in the hospital in Ocala. And I remember going in to, to visit her. And I knocked on the door, and I walked in. And there she was with her, with her leg in a cast. And she was all in suspension there, not able to move from the bed. And she looked at me, and she said, well, you finally caught me. And I felt like I was a police dete detective or something like that. It was, it, it was, it was pretty comical. Her, her mom was there, and that became quite a story in the community, how I had finally caught up with this girl. But we had a prayer together, and I prayed that the Lord would help her to get well, and, and she did get well, and, and just that she would draw closer to the Lord. I'm not sure how all this worked out, and the years to come, but at that moment, I finally did catch up with her. And it's, it's important for us to remember that, that the Lord wants to catch up with each one of us. The Lord wants us to become part of his flock. He wants to look after us and to protect us. And yet we know that there is the evil one that Jesus talks about who is trying to lead us away and trying to pull us away to other things all the time. The, the illusion that, that you don't need God because you, you're too smart or you don't need the Lord's presence in your life because you've got other things you can turn to. And the one who is so satisfied with that, who gives us things and fools us, is the evil one, Satan. Satan really likes it when parents don't care about the faith of their children, when family members don't care about the faith of others. Satan really enjoys that. Now Jesus today prays that we might be one, that we might be unified as Christians. Now, that does not mean that the church is always going to be the same. Jesus knows that we all have different ways to worship him. I know that for all of my churches that I've served in the past, I always say, and I say that even about the churches in our presbytery, each church has its own personality. It's amazing. Just like children in a family, each church is different. Our missions are different. Our outreaches are different. Our traditions are different. Our music can be different. And that's fine. Those things should not divide us. We are to be unified. But the Lord wants us, most of all, to serve him and to glorify him so that others might see that love in our lives. I like tradition, but I also really enjoy contemporary music. We will all never believe precisely the same things. Christian unity transcends all of these differences and joins people together in love. And that is so important to remember. Some, some people will say, you know, you don't believe like I do on this one particular issue in the church. And so I can't really associate with you or be part of your Christian fellowship. The 
great reformer, I remember Martin Luther, got along with so many people in the Roman Catholic Church, but there, there was one issue that, you know, there were a couple issues that he, he had problems with, but um, he said, you know, we could still be friends, we can still try to work together for Christian mission. And they said, no, we can't work together. Christian unity is so important to us as we seek to follow Jesus Christ as disciples. And I have to say, only Christ's love in our hearts can bring down the barriers in our hearts to one another. This past week, I saw on Facebook a story from a friend of mine, John Pine, whom I went to school with at seminary. And when we were at Princeton Seminary together, one of our classmates who lived right next door to John on the third floor of Brown Hall was a fellow from Nigeria. And his name was Uga. And Uga was just a, just, just a wonderful Christian, very dedicated. And he went on later in life to become the head of the church in Nigeria. And just a, a, a wonderful man. Unfortunately, he died at a very young age. But Uga had a son, young Uga. And John Pine was friends with, with close friends with Uga. And he also became very close with Uga's family. So he knew young Uga. And what was really cool in this Facebook story was that young Uga's children, now follow this story, Uka's grandchildren were going to be going to Minnesota to go fishing with my classmate, John Pine, fishing there in one of the Great Lakes of Minnesota. I tell you that story because here we see the love of Christ that binds us together, this unity that has crossed into three generations. That's what the love of Christ does for us. It transcends so many obstacles and brings us close together in the love of Christ. We thank God today on this Sunday that the Lord promises to be praying for you right now. And that's a source of great encouragement to know that and also to know that the Lord is so pleased when we work together and we strive for unity so that the whole world can see how much we love each other and we care about others. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your love for us and we pray that in the midst of difficulties and the challenges of this life, that we might be strong and not give up, that our hearts might be strong and that we might be unified in glorifying you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Die.
shield my soul from sin. Oh, let me hear thee speaking in an accent clear and still. Upon the storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will. Oh, speak to me, assure me to hasten or control. Oh, speak and make me listen, thou guardian of my soul. Oh, Jesus, thou hast promised to all who follow thee, that when thou art in glory, there shall thy servant be. And Jesus, I have promised to And now may the grace and the peace and the love of Jesus Christ go with you all. Amen. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour every day. Go now and stay. Steadfast, strong, and true. No, he will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching all.